If you are looking for a healthy choice in snacks, then you are at the right place because in this video you will learn how to make crispy and healthy snacks without frying and without compromising the taste. This video is dedicated to the popular authentic Maharashtrian dish Aruvadi which is also known as Patra in Gujarati cuisine and Patrode in South India. Hi lovelies, I am Ishwari and the recipe I am sharing with you all today is my mother-in-law's traditional festive recipe and a comfort snack which my husband grew up eating. She prepares this delicious snack for us whenever we visit her and that's why this has become my go-to healthy snack too. So I decided to learn this recipe from her and recreate it for you on the occasion of Gudi Parva, a festival that is celebrated as New Year in Maharashtra. So this festive season, treat your loved ones in a healthier way with this delicious fritter recipe. To make this, we will need colocasia, taro or aru leaves, gram or chickpea flour, rice flour, wheat flour, tamarind, jaggery, garlic paste, ginger paste, sesame seeds, fennel seeds, carom seeds, cumin seeds powder, coriander powder, garam masala, red chili powder, turmeric, asafoetida, oil, salt and water. Let's start from the leaves. In one bunch you generally get 10 leaves. Now rinse them first. Once you buy the leaves from the market, ensure to use them within a day as the leaves start wilting or drying up from the corners. Try to use leaves that have a black stalk and make use of fresh and green leaves which are not itchy. Now take a clean kitchen towel and wipe the leaves dry in this manner. Do this gently for all the leaves and don't let them tear. Keep this aside. Now to prepare tamarind paste for the batter, take a saucepan on stove top, add 1 4 cup of water, tamarind and jaggery. Let it boil over low heat, stirring occasionally. We are using tamarind mainly to reduce the itchiness of aru leaves if any and jaggery to balance the sourness from the tamarind. Switch off the flame and let it cool down. Use a strainer to smash it as well as strain it. Add little water for faster results. You can add store bought tamarind paste and powdered jaggery to the chickpea batter instead of making it at home but homemade is healthier choice as it won't have any preservatives. Now keep this aside. Next we need to remove the stems of our leaves. For the recipe it's important to flatten these leaves. So just fold it and using a knife remove the thick stem without tearing the leaf. Work with one leaf at a time. To level it further use a rolling pin and run it along the way to even it up further. This is the easiest way I have learned to flatten these leaves. See this it can easily be folded however you want. Prepare all the leaves this way and keep them ready. Before making the batter, just crush carom seeds and fennel seeds. Crushing them enhances the flavor. You can use a crusher or mortar and pestle or simply use a rolling pin in this manner. In a mixing bowl, add all the ingredients mentioned for the batter. Rice flour for crispiness, wheat flour to increase the stickiness so that the worries remain intact. You can substitute tamarind with lemon juice as well. Don't skip sesame seeds because it gives a nutty flavor to this recipe. Fennel seeds gives refreshing flavors and crunch. This batter should have spicy, tangy and sweet flavor so depending on your taste you can adjust the red chili, jaggery and tamarind quantity. For gluten free recipe skip wheat flour and asafoetida. I am adding oil for softness. Mix this well and add some water slowly to make a paste that is spreadable, not runny. This is one of those Indian dishes that is vegan, low fat, richer in nutrition and flavor and better for the gut, brain, heart and eye health. The underrated colocasia leaves are a good source of dietary fiber, vitamins like A, vitamin C, B complex, calcium and fiber. To make aruvadi, divide the leaves into two batches of five each to make two rolls. For the first roll, take the biggest leaf and place it upside down that is vein side up. Apply a thin layer of the batter using hands preferably and spread it all over the leaf. Place another leaf upside down again but in an alternate way to the first that is pointed part of the leaf is now at the broad portion of the first leaf. Spread the batter evenly on top. Basically, place the leaves in such a manner that we fill up the gaps. Repeat these steps for all the leaves. This dish saves time especially if you are expecting guests or during festivals when you want to serve a classic Maharashtrian dish as you can prepare and keep it in the refrigerator and fry or shallow fry as needed. Now form a tight roll, fold the bottom slightly, apply the batter so that the leaves remain sticked well. Similarly, fold another end and apply the batter. Then bring in the left to touch the middle line, apply some batter to help with sticking. 
Similarly, fold the right to touch the middle line. Now roll starting bottom to up, rolling as tight as possible. This is to ensure the bodies don't break later. Similarly, make the second roll. And both the rolls are ready now. Let's begin steaming. You can steam using your regular steamer or pressure cooker or instant pot. Add 2-3 cups of water to it. I have this multi-side steamer basket which fits various pots and pans as it's expandable and adjustable. It has a folding collapsible design for compact space saving storage. It can also be used as a strainer, colander, centerpiece, serving bowl as a fruit container or to filter extra water when making salad. Check the link in the description to purchase it. Place both the rolls in the steamer basket to steam for 15 to 20 minutes on medium heat. Close the lid and if using a pressure cooker, remove the whistle. After 15 minutes, once the steam has settled, open the lid and take the rolls out. Allow the steamed body to cool completely before slicing them else they will break and not hold shape. Use a knife like this one to cut each roll into thin slices. The thinner the vadis, the crisper it gets. I will show you two methods of tempering these vadis in order to make them crispy without frying. First, you can do it in microwave and second on a flat pan on stove top. You can also deep fry them. For deep frying the vadis, heat oil and dip the vadis in hot oil. Fry vadis on low to medium heat until they are golden brown in color. You can add a tempering of sesame and mustard seeds after they are fried. Tempering makes it a healthier snack by making it low calorie. The steam roll and the vadis can both be frozen in ziplock or freezer safe containers. They remain good for a few months. You can simply refrigerate them if you want to eat them within a few days or even a week. Take it out one hour before making, bring it to a room temperature, shallow fry it and serve. Let's see how to grill the vadis in microwave. Place the vadis on grill stand of the microwave. Apply oil with silicone brush on one side of the vadis. I usually like doing it in the microwave because of the convenience. Now put it in the microwave and grill for 7 minutes. Remove it and flip the vadis. Apply oil and put it back in the microwave to grill for 7 more minutes. Your arvadis are ready to be served. Now let me show you how to do it on stove top. Take a pan and place the vadis. Apply oil with silicone brush. I have used olive oil in the recipe but you can choose yours. Put on the stove and flip all the vadis and let it cook for 5-7 to seven minutes on low flame. Now apply oil, flip and cook for 5-7 to seven minutes until the vadis are golden brown and crispy. Serve these hot and crispy aru vadis sprinkled with some coriander. Aru vadis may also be served for breakfast, as an appetizer at parties or as a side dish with meals. It can be eaten either alone or with chutney. They are wonderful tea time goodies too. Help me grow guys. I really put my heart into crafting healthy recipes for y'all. Do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the notifications of delicious recipes directly to you. Your comments and reviews make my day and they also help others to find my recipes. Mm. It's so good. I will be back with another healthy recipe till then. Eat clean.